I figured I'd try and get uh, everything in Friday night if I could, and then hopefully put it up in the cloud on uh, as I sleep tonight. We talked about the opening. It wasn't a fantastic opening. Just to let you know that um, I do get your emails, and I read them. And this is, the, as I said, the best time of year for me. It always is. And the worst time of year, too, because uh, this is, uh, I would say, some of the biggest volume uh, portions of the year. We get a lot of concerns um, with uh, some of the horses. And it's a little bit of anger from some people. But um, what are you going to do? We usually just, uh, people people can rant. I get thick skin. And uh, I do appreciate the emails and the feedback. And you're not going to hurt my feelings I, at the end of the day. We continue to do the best job we can, and that's all you can do. That's what my mom says, anyway. That's what Gail says. You should do the best you can. It's not really true, but it makes me feel good, anyway. So, <laughs> I'm going to go through the babies, all of them. Still got a pile of babies here. Um, a, lot of, a lot going on with the babies. Still, I wonder how many we turned out. Well, we'll start out. We'll keep, we'll keep track. Ale Sun. Ale Sun is racing Monday at a fair. No, she's not racing Monday at a fair. She's racing in the Grassroots Consolation next Saturday. Jason didn't want to race her Monday, Saturday. It makes sense. It's only fair. So Ale Sun is going to race in the... One of the things I did right, at least this month, was Ale Sun is going to race in the Consolation and um, the Grassroots Final, it looks like. So Ale Sun is going to race on uh, Saturday, next Saturday evening in Sciota for $75,000. Anteros, he's back going now. Now that said, he's got that curb that's bothering him. It's right on top of where he'd injured himself. So want to stop with him, cool that out for a few days and then cry it. Um, I'm sure he'll be fine. Arctic Force trained today, trained really good. I had a long conversation with one of the major owners in Arctic Force and I said, I was happy with him, but what do we do? Do we continue to race him or do we put him away when he's sharp? I don't think I've ever trained a horse as good as he trained and then offered to shut him down and turn him out. But the alternative is you don't want him tired. And uh, I think he could be any kind of colt at three. He's shown tons of speed. He's second to beat a half length, 55. Took a mark of 156. Showing some real speed and some real snap to him. So I think that's a question we'll put to the group and decide what we're going to do. I'm torn on that. Almost a coin flip. Do we race him once or twice more? Or do we turn him out? That money we would make racing him in the numbers of one, numbers of two, whatever, it will still be made when he comes back. And you can only make it once. When he comes back, if we win two more races, he's numbers of three, but he's less than 20. So he fits in numbers of two or 15 at Mohawk, uh, two or 20. Um, or we can wait and race him and get that money when we come back. Theoretically. You should always get money when you can, I guess. But um, I would say... Maybe turn them out, but we'll see what this week brings. Beach Boutique is racing Wednesday at Grand River, Drew the 8-hole. As one of our clients noted, the last nine draws for the stable have not been very effective. 8-hole, 7-hole, 8-hole, 7-hole, 7-hole, 5-hole, 8-hole. It's horrible. Beach Boutique drew the 8-hole in the Maiden at Grand River on Wednesday. We'll see what happens. Uh, first start on a half-mile track, a little tighter venue, 8-hole. A lot not going on for her. Beach Boutique, I assume she's going to be racing. I don't know why she isn't racing yet. Maybe racing tomorrow or something. She should be in to go this week. We'll see how Beach Bum BB is. Jessica picked off in 55. Didn't get picked off. Just fell short in 55 or 56 the other day. I thought she raced really, really well. Uh, bottle of Red. There, she's turned out. That filly's turned out. Little line in her knee. Now, for those of you out there, I need to be abundantly clear. That message board... I believe is a monstrosity. I know a lot of people go on and they like to talk back and forth. There are some people that vent on there who uh, I just remove their comments and if it's really nasty, I ban them from it. Um, but I don't read it that often unless somebody says, hey, you should go read what somebody said or hey, you know, somebody's asking a question. Some people pose actual questions on there thinking that I'm going to go on and respond. I don't get those messages. I don't go on the message board. I don't look at it. So I don't know to when somebody asked a, a question about a few horses the other day and I made it clear. Bottle of red. Yeah, she's turned out. I have to understand too that not a lot of people watch these videos. Well, a lot of people watch them, but some people don't. 
if they don't watch the videos, there's no way for them to know about Bottle of Red because I haven't updated anybody on the site in a, in a month or so. So people are asking about Bottle of Red. I apologize. I guess they're not going to see it now anyway because they don't watch the videos. But Bottle of Red has a line, had a line in her knee and she was turned out for three months. So August, September, September, October, October, November. She's going to come back in mid to end November, get re-x-rayed, which I'm certain everything will be fine now. A line in a knee is not like a broken knee. Uh, a line in a knee is just a, it's a, just like it sounds, a line in the bone and it heals in perfectly. Um, but if you don't, if you try to push on when they have those lines, they can turn into fractures and that then, then there, that is a problem. So... Um, bottle of red she's going to be out till mid to end november brush cut blew a giant quarter crack in his foot this guy talk about bad luck in 2019 wowzers blew a big quarter crack in his foot but this quote looks like a million bucks I paced his third quarter in 27 in a piece the other day i thought he raced great and blew the quarter crack i guess leaving the gate i talked to uh i talked to robert shepherd afterwards and he said anthony by the three eighths there was blood on my suit like the horse it was a big big quarter crack so the horse raced well, uh, and I have the utmost respect for this colt. I think I don't see how he won't be a nice horse in 2020. He's got the right attitude. Let those feet grow out and fill out, much like we did with Arctic Forest. Chop all, wait for that quarter crack to grow down just a little bit. Chop all the toes off him and out to the field. And then we have Cabernet, another horse. Where's Cabernet? Talk about her every week. She trained in 214 the other day, 216, 214. And Harry said she's been fantastic. I saw her in the barn today. She is as shiny as a new penny, except we don't make those in Canada anymore. So that's a stupid saying now if you're Canadian. It's as shiny as a, I don't know. She's shiny. She looks shiny. Cabernet has been training good. Canadian Titan, probably one of the happiest, biggest surprises of the year. Yeah, we hope she'd be a nice filly, but she never, uh, we were always waiting for those signs that she would turn into the horse she is now. We just didn't see any of them until she was racing. Uh, I looked the other day. She's never been worse than second, ever, in her life. It's pretty impressive. Twenty-eight dollars or $29,000 made. Yeah, she was a $40,000 yearling. But again, they don't expire December 31st. This is a teaching year. Sure, it would be great to make lots of money. I'm so proud of Globetrotting and Compass Rose DC and even spend that money. And uh, even, even uh, really blue chip, even though those horses... Now, she didn't turn a profit either. She was a $31,000 yearling. But these horses are coming back at three. They don't leave at two. We didn't lease them for that money. They were purchased. So Canadian Titan, although she hasn't reached her sale per price yet, she's got her whole life to do it. And she looks like she's going to be some kind of nice three-year-old also. Capistrano got picked off of the wire last week. That was a pretty rough drive. Uh, and But again, I don't like making fun of drivers uh you know, mary was a great driver he made a mistake with the philly i think it was a combination of things it was a bad drive in a number of people's part and um she got beat but she's tough she came out of it sound we're gonna school her on tuesday she's gonna race back somebody says why are we not racing capistrano here's a newsflash she's not the soundest philly in the world we're trying to keep her comfortable and sound and effective and have a horse left at the end of the year she's got the grassroots and the grassroots final left that's what uh, Capistrano has left. And we'd like to have her fresh. Love to win the grassroots final with her, or at least one of her horses, and put her away fresh. And that is the plan for Capistrano. Uh, Classic Con is schooling on Tuesday. I told everybody I thought he was schooling this Tuesday. I was off by a week. Mario's been very happy with him. No hobbles on. Uh, it looks like a million bucks, he told me. So, Classic Con is schooling on Tuesday. Compass Rose DC is racing for $300,000 now. I apologize, and I'm one of your partners on Compass Rose, uh, the dreaded eight hole. Not what we wanted to see from our girl, but um, she's overcome a lot this year, and we'll see what she's made of on Sunday night. Uh, don't believe me, just watch. Trained today, I believe, and I believe he is coming back. Uh, coming back to a Sunday day. I had to read it on the board. I didn't see it. Uh, when I was looking at the other notes, I saw that Jonathan Drury's driving him. Jonathan Drury schooled this horse before, way back in June. And I think he'll rather like, don't believe me, just watch. Five holes, somebody said, is he outside? No, it's not. Um, a tight track like Clinton, I would say, I'm going to guess, the positions of winning the most are one, two, five. On a half-mile track like Flamborough or Grand River, it would almost be five, one, two, or one, five, two. 
it's a good position for him to leave from. If there's a lot of speed in there, yeah, he might have some problems, but he's a good horse. First start he win, he came first over and won. I'm not really worried about Don't Believe Me, Just Watch. Just a good colt. He's been great for us, and I expect that to continue. Emerald Miss, after her two, we'll give her three months, or two and a half month layoff, she'll come back in, probably have her ready for the winter in Woodbine. I've tried to time a lot of these vacations for the horses uh, to coincide with when we need horses good at the stable, end of December, January, February, March. And Emerald Miss should be ready to go in the meat of that order, right in the middle of that order. Enduring Strength was a winner the other day, uh, 158 flat, a little bit like I'll play it alone, got to get his head back in the game. Um, we have a snake cord on him rather than that little mini bit that I had on him the other night when he near got away on me. So Enduring Strength, I looked at the list, he's bracing for 23000 on Tuesday, should be pretty competitive in that race, I believe. Um, unless I miss something in that race. Excellent Nation, he's back full jogging now. Another three weeks, he'll be back training, and then right back on his schedule of training and training. I suspect, what is it? So let's say it's September 1st. He should be ready by November, I think. Um, excellent Nation. So that should be good for us. Fox Valley Shazam drew the seven hole at Grand River. Another poor drawer drew the seven hole at Grand River on, must be Wednesday. Um... Uh, we had been blistering her and blistering her and getting her tuned up for this start. I think she should be good for Wednesday at Grand River. See what happens out of the seven hole. Who knows? Forged in Fire, he's ready to come back pretty well. I've been taking my time with him. He'll either go to Harry or Kevin. I'm not sure yet, but he's had virtually most of the year off recovering from that surgery on his throat. Frontier Cruise, a couple more starts for him, and we'll pull the shoes off him and kick him out for the fall. He's showing enough. I, a little little flat the other day, but he, he's still got a little cheater in him when he wants to. I eh? see him trying to half pull up at the half there. That's the stuff he wouldn't get away with with me. But, you know, Robert doesn't know the colt. And, and uh, Giddy Up Max, our other horse, won the race. I was very happy with him. Uh, why did I have... Because Frontier Cruise, F comes before G, that's why. Um, but Giddy Up Max starting to get a little dark now. That's not cool. Giddy up, Max, um, or Frontier Cruise. We'll race him back his next start. Give him a week off, and then I'll drive him. Giddy up, Max raced well. He's got a couple more starts left in him also, and then we'll, uh, again, cut him loose. He's really coming on 56-2 uh, and two the other day, so that was a good mile for him. Globe Trotting, obviously leading the way right now in the stable. A couple of horses coming on late, but Globe Trotting with 77000 made. Probably going to be first or second favorite in the $300,000 final. I could have looked that up. I'm going to assume she's favorite. First or second favorite for sure. And um, she still has the race in Delaware and the Breeders' Crown left. So good things happening for the Globe Trotting Group. Harness AM, we don't know yet whether she's going to race in the final or the consolation. Either would be fine. And then she has one more race after that. That's plenty for this filly. There's another filly. Great filly, tough jurisdiction. She hasn't even cracked 30,000 yet, and she's raced great all year long. You just never know. Uh, Havana Unana, I talked to my, my partner Jim about her today. Uh, we're going to stop with her for a little while. Not a big deal. I think this is going to be a really nice three-year-old filly. Um, she's shown me a lot. She had a bit of a rough ride all summer, but hopefully we'll get her straightened away for 2020. Hometown Boys, he's out in the field uh, getting some grass and growing up. Exactly what we need him to do. I'll play it alone again. Race tonight. This is like the third time we've scoped him and he's had stuff in his throat. He's This summer in this heat has really played havoc with this colt. Uh, I was happy with his attitude tonight. You could tell he was a little soft. Obviously, he got beaten a maiden. Short and soft. Still won a mile 58 and 4 over Grand River. 58 and 3, 58 and 4. Raced decent. Uh, didn't race good for him, but raced decent overall, especially considering what was going on inside his airway. Inland Beach just got picked off in a, may, in a grassroots or last start. Just got beat at the wire for a second beat a half a length. Paced 55 the two starts before that. Now she drew eight in against the Beast on uh, Monday. Um, I guess they combined that class too. So Inland Beach will race against her stable mate, Miss Brampton Beast, on Monday night. But has been doing very good. Uh, Jailhouse Masters out in the field, or no, he's not out in the field. He injured himself. He had stall rest before he goes to the field. So he'll be going to the field in about five weeks, four weeks. Johan is back on the walker. He's walking now. Um, it's complete start over for him. 
uh, as far as uh, the injury that he had to his hind leg. Uh, we'll see how he comes out of that. Um, he's back on the walker right now. Just for me and you, she's racing really, really well and just no luck. The other day she made a break and I, I had to gamble. I had to leave with her and she wasn't super comfortable leaving out of there, but I had to push and push because getting away fifth in a short field when you have to be first or second, just not probably the way to go and it wouldn't have been. Um, she ended up making a break at the start and finishing seventh, so she's going to miss the consolation, I believe. She's got a few stake races left down in, in, the, in uh, Pennsylvania, but she can easily, I think she can handle a maiden pretty easy, so I would be surprised if she didn't end up with a pretty decent two-year-old mark regardless. That's how tough it is in uh, Pennsylvania. Knockdown, or uh, just for me, Knockdown Dragout is back with us. She's probably going to school on Tuesday. we got a shoeing change tomorrow, maybe a slow mile tomorrow. And then she will be schooling Tuesday at Mohawk. Libero Hanover, talk to the clients who might be putting Libero Hanover on on gate, considering he made the Stallion Series final. He may be, this may be a good time to uh, recoup some capital with him. Not recoup, I guess. He's made, uh, I don't know, 20 some thousand. And he was a $12,000 yearling. So if we could sell him for good money, I think it would be, a, uh, we'd be using one of these, a black pen to write uh, his name in our book. McPherson Thunder, you're out. There's another horse I had some hate mail over, but at the end of the day, um, he was about our fifth best two-year-old colt in our barn, our barn. So um, I know he went for a little less than he could have in a condition claimer. He went for a lot more and we could have raced him there. But at the end of the day, um, yeah, we could have retained him for 8,000 or 8,500 or whatever, but why? Um, Eventually, he would have got out of the, the cheaper division of the condition claimer, and then he would have been in trouble. And that's not to say he would have manhandled them in London anyway all winter. Nothing worse than having the horses, just like we had last year, you know, horses that might do in condition claimers. Not real uh, party favors, not real uh, helpful to the stable. And McPherson Thunder, he was okay, but he had a, a mediocre attitude, and he was a mediocre colt, and we opted to, we opted to sell him. Marzank Hanover is racing at Mohawk on Monday too. A little bit of a jump for her. Um, we opted to, to uh, forego Kawartha this week and go to Mohawk. We'll see how she bounces out this week. Miss Brampton Beast is racing Monday. As I said, two hole with her. There's no cakewalks there. She's going to be maybe six or seven to one morning line. This is going to be a tough, a tough class for her. I think she's probably sitting on a 53, 54 mile. If she's sharp, she trained good this morning. So we'll see how Miss Brampton Beast looks Monday night at Mohawk. Muscle Chrome's out in the field. I got big hopes for her, too, as a three-year-old. I don't think she's going to set any world records, but I think she's going to be a very effective horse for us as a three-year-old. Same with the next one, Nancy Allison. We've kicked her out. Old Nance. Nancy, uh, another horse that was really hot at the start of the year that really showed, tried to show some intelligence at the end of the year. Still a little self-confidence, uh, some self-confidence issues at the gate, but hopefully we can fix that. Horse that really bounced back into contention for some stake money towards the end of the year was need your opinion she looked awesome in winning the other night in Hanover Olympic hopefuls racing tonight uh, we'll retain her for a three-year-old season uh, I, there's no point in taking her back home we'll leave her out with Angie and Rob in in in, in Illinois uh, overdue mission is racing Monday at uh, I don't know where the fair is racing in a fair and people keep saying why do you keep racing in the fairs uh, Olympic hopeful would fit the non-winners of two. They went 55 and four the other day at Sayota. Enough said. Uh, overdue mission. There's a reason these fairs are important for these horses. One, it's experience for our horses. It seems to be some confidence when they when they win some races. You saw the confidence that overdue mission exhibited after the wins in Busiris and the race that Jason raced wherever he raced. Uh, I forget where it was, but she was very very good third or next start trot of 59 i think she's very close to sitting on a good mile and a leader in the buckeye series path of totality has been racing very good another touch of hate mail the other day somebody said why do you keep putting her on the front she's handy at the gate we get up there in 28 and 3 i want a second quarter in 30 seconds one of the favorites run and no one else was around me she got beaten 57 and 1, trotted 58. She's already taken a mark of 58. She's already, I think, secured a place in the Stallion Series final. She's an effective filly, a nice filly, going to probably be a nice three year old, but at the same time, there's a lot of nice two year olds in Pennsylvania.
And it's not that easy. When you snug that filly and fight with her at the gate, she gets fighting with you. When you let her trot out like that, you know, it'd be nice to get spotted, but it's not always that easy. And she sat in the two hole and finished fourth or fifth before. So I think she's just a, a meat and potatoes grinder type filly. That's a nice filly. And with some really nice fillies also. So Path of Totality has been pretty impressive. Really Blue Chip really fell off the face of the earth her last two, three starts. She's coming back here tomorrow morning. She'll be in, uh, where are we going to send her? She'll go to Harry's Burn. We'll put her in Harry's Burn and see if we can get her spark back up. I assume, uh, again, with this heat and whatnot, she may have been another horse that was affected very negatively by that. So we'll see if we can't get her squared away. We will, a tough spot with her. I mean, she's already got a win in 30000 on her card. It's not like you can put her in a maiden at Grand River, I don't think. <laughs> but uh, she'll race in a two-year-old race at some point. We'll try and get her prepped and back on target. She should have enough points to, to stay uh, to stay in the, the consolation of the of the Sire Stakes, which is probably a good fit for her. Rooney, blue chip, we turned him out, pulled the shoes off him. Again, somebody's saying, well, why would we take him, send him to John, he made a break, keep him with John, geld him, train him back down, uh, train him back down, and then, you know, and then just turn him out. We trained him in 2-4, I said to myself, can he trot in 57 right now? No. He's a big, giant colt that struggles on a tighter track, so that means he has to go to Mohawk. Uh, can he race at Mohawk right now and trot in 56 or 57? Probably not. So what are we doing? Why are we beating our head against the wall? Turn the horse out while the grass is green still and let him grow. Let him fill up. So that's what we did there with our boy Rooney Blue Chip. Rose Run Valiant uh, was a winner the other day at uh, Northfield Park. 2-1. I talked to Aaron Merriman two days ago. He said he really liked them. You could tell he was really green, but he did his work and did it well, which is good for him and for us. Rose Run Versatile. She's turned out in the field. Had a good 27, uh, 20, 2017, 2019. Uh, looks like she's going to be a pretty effective filly at three. So we turned her out. She looked a little tired to me. Wasn't going to make the Stallion Series final. Was no need to keep pushing her and pushing her when she was obviously tired. Cut her loose. She made like 18 grand this year. I know nobody made any money with her, but at the same time, they don't expire on December 31st, as I said before. Sebastian Yu turned him out. Now that was uh, a troubling... Uh, troubling season for him, eh? Just a nice colt, really fast. Seemed to really put together the last three starts of the year. I'll take at least some of the credit for him making a break in his last start. As I said that night, there was a sense of urgency to get him to the winner's circle, and I didn't think we could get the jump on Corey Callahan in the two-hole. I pushed him when he was just not quite squared away halfway down the lane, and he run. So other than that, he's had, uh, he's had his moments. The runaway win was something at the Meadows. And then uh, his last two starts, you could see he was sitting in a hole. He understood what he was doing. He was behaved. These are the things we want to see. And Sebastian Ray probably sitting another horse, sitting on a hopeful 2020. Sometimes things happen. He's if he does well in Delaware, he gets to race in Scioto for the for the and the Buckeye final, I believe, which will go for 75,000. That's a great purse. Program's getting so good there. Uh, sometimes things happen. Has been good. He's been spread out throughout the year. It was scratched last week because there was a thunderstorm. I assume he'll be racing Monday, Tuesday of this week. I assume spend that money racing for three hundred on Sunday. A lot of complaints with some spend that money in the last four or five starts, and I think that's mostly due to expectations. People saw her win in fifty eight and just assumed that she could trot in fifty five. Well, two things. One, maybe she can't. And two, she has been battling allergies all summer. And people, somebody said to me, I use allergies as an excuse all the time. Do you have allergies? I know my wife does. I listen to her sniffle and cough all the time. When they scope these horses and there's white mucus in their throat, somebody says, well, you can treat treat them for that. Okay, go treat them for it in, uh, in uh, Ohio. Tell me how you make out. You might give them a little dose of cortisone 48 hours out. You got allergies and you take a puffer two days ago. How are you feeling today? You feeling good? doesn't really help that well and it's very difficult to treat these horses in an effective manner you gotta wait for the cold to come you gotta do the best you can we've been spending a lot more time outside which is kind of opposite you think while well, you're out in the in the barn a dusty barn where the air maybe isn't as fresh if there's no there's not enough airflow put them out in the field let them get their head down walk around and be animals and sometimes they'll turn around i think you saw that with spend that money your last start she tried at 57 somebody said well time doesn't matter and they went a big half she closed into the speed Yes, they had a slowing last half. She did not. I was very happy with her. We're hoping, optimistic, 
that uh, we can see uh, at least a flicker, as I said before, a flicker of the spend that money from June in September. That would be great. Uh, Spirit of Dio certainly coming around. She looked unbelievable the other day, second and 56, and then I trained her today, and she he had some kind of wallop to her. She beat up on uh, on an age trotter and a pacer today and looked very, very good doing it. Really excited to see what she's going to do. I really hope she trots and gets a good gets a good run at the leaders in the elimination of the final in a peaceful way. I think this filly possesses as much talent as a lot of, probably most of the trotters out there. Sure, there's some standouts and there's some killers, but they're also gone away to their jurisdictional races. This might be a little bit more watered down this year in the, in the peaceful way, and if it is... She could be a real contender. So I'm really excited to see what Spirit of Dio is going to do. Sunshine and Shade schooled in 58 the other day. Mario wanted to qualify him, so I guess we'll probably just go with two qualifiers. He'll qualify him Tuesday at Mohawk. Susie K is going to race Monday at the same fair with Overdue Mission. No, I can't be there. I have to be back in Ontario for Monday. So uh, I think the, the kid with the long hair there, uh, I forget his name, Joe Dirt or something. He's gonna drive. Uh, he's gonna drive. Uh, uh, Susie K. Trafalgar uh, Wednesday. We get the uh, X-ray. Now I know I said the end of the week couldn't get us in till Wednesday. A couple extra days is probably a good thing. Uh, every day is a good thing in the pool. So a couple of days we'll have uh, we'll have our all our questions answered as far as Trafalgar is concerned. Time all. Uh, nope, you're gone. Time on Dazzle, Time on Kazam. Time on Kazam, I, again, got a little hate mail over him. Colt had some issues, right? And I know 4,200 was well under what he was worth. So what do we keep him for? Nine, try to Amish him, try to sell him, try to train him back. If the horses don't possess, yours if you wanted, possess more talent than Time on Kazam all summer. It appeared that he did, but he didn't want to use it. So again, we sold him, but he got a lot more than Time on Kazam. At the end of the day, we go to the sale, we don't know what we're going to get. We could have put them online and held firm, but at the end of the day, we got what we got for Time All Kazam. Uh, Utopian, he sold also. He only got 4000 that horse. I would have thought he would have got more money than that also. Clean, lagged, two-year-old pacing colt shows 58. Just this day and age, not a lot of people for looking for those types of horses in uh, August. Watch Av school today, uh, school train today. He's going to race next Saturday. We're going to race him two or three more times. He is a massive animal right now. He has done so much growing. It's really incredible. Wiggle Delight also was sick last week. You could tell, obviously. He used her pretty hard. Mary used her pretty hard, and then she got a little weak down by the wire. Drew her blood. Her white count was high still. So uh, the vet switched up the antibiotics to put her on. There might be a little something viral going on there. And uh, we switched up the antibiotics on her. Willpower Fashion, another horse had a great year. Didn't put together a ton of money, barely cracked 10,000. He's going to race in a couple of maiden races, and then we'll put him away for the year. Same goes for Zeb Sunshine. Zeb Sunshine um, has been a decent horse. Been a decent horse for us and done well this, uh, so far. I mean, pace 58. Uh, I think he's got a check in both starts, third and fifth, or maybe he's third and sixth. I'm not sure. Um, he's racing tomorrow at Kawartha Downs. So I'd like to race him a couple more times and put him away also. So a lot of horses being put away, the horses that we, we opted not to keep and retain for various reasons, they've now left us. They've been sold. Uh, the ones we have left are going to race out throughout the, the rest of the fall and then be put away or some of them be put away very soon. Uh, the ones that have already been put away, we're going to earmark them to be back for January, mid to, to end January. So that should help us also between the age horses that we bought and kept and uh, procured, if you will, um, and the horses that we have coming back, and probably some that we're going to look at at Harrisburg, I think we should have a much more effective winter. Again, we're going to be sending out emails for everybody that want, I want, I, I would like to see our clients just send a couple of emails off to some people at, at uh, whether it be Flamborough, the AGCO, or Ontario Racing, and let them know and explain to them why it's important that a policy such as the one that, that Flamborough has opted to use is such a detriment to horse racing. Maybe how it affects you personally and uh, how it makes you feel. And again, as I said, be respectful because we're a respectful group. But at the same time, um, I think it's important that everybody weighs in. Obviously, in this day and age of social media, it's important it takes a couple of minutes to write an email, but it goes a long way. Anyway, that's all the burns. That's, or not the burns, the burns will be back. I guess I'll do the burns tomorrow. We'll do the burns tomorrow. 
that is all the babies. We had the opening, all the babies. I'm going to come back tomorrow with all the stables. Talk to you guys soon.